First of all, um, Representative, can you just say and spell your name? Uh, Richard Nelson. That's R-I-C-H-A-R-D-N-E-L-S-O-N. Thank you, sir. And who do you represent? Um, so I represent the 89th uh, State House District, which is in Mandeville, right across the, road, the uh, lake from New Orleans. Okay. So tell me, what is HB 524? Uh, so HB 524 is a, uh, is a bill to basically put to a referendum, a uh, vote of the people, uh, the question of whether or not to legalize marijuana. Um, the way it would work is we're going to have a statewide election if the people vote in favor, uh, if the majority of the state votes in favor, then marijuana would basically be decriminalized across the entire state. Um, but if a, any individual parish voted against it, then we wouldn't be issuing any licenses in that parish to, um, to sell or grow uh, marijuana in that specific parish. So, you know, for example, if, if Caddo Parish votes in favor and Bo Bozier Parish votes against it, well, then you'll be able to, it'll be decriminalized everywhere. So you won't get arrested for having marijuana in either of the parishes, but um, you'll only be able to sell it or grow it in Caddo. Uh, but the people in Bozier could possibly drive across the border, kind of like a, uh, kind of like the dry county idea with uh, alcohol. What made you want to start initiating this bill? Uh, well, when I ran for office in 20, uh, 2019, uh, I would knock on about 5,000 doors and it would surprise me. I, I live in a very conservative district. You know, I'm a, you know, a Republican, conservative Republican, but uh, it surprised me how many people in every, you know, every other door, every couple of doors I'd knock on would say, you know what, I think we really should, you know, look at legalizing marijuana. And a lot of it was related to um, either they or somebody that, you know, one of their loved ones had been uh, involved with opioids for, you know, maybe from a pain, you know, they had some kind of injury, they had some kind of, uh, you know, prescription for opioids from a, from a pain perspective. And they said, oh, I, they, you know, they had, a, they got addicted to it. And so, um, they, they told me that basically marijuana was the only way they were able to get away from it. And I had a lot of similar stories to that. Some people just said, hey, look, I think it's a waste of time. I think it's a waste of time and money for the state to try and punish it. Um, some people said, hey, look, I think it's just a lot of money that we're leaving on the table. Uh, we're sending, you know, we're sending it to drug dealers and cartels right now. Like, I feel like we could, it'd be better if we taxed it. So it was interesting to me how many, how many, how many times that conversation came up in that, you know, my campaign. And uh, recently, when this session was coming up, uh, a group of my constituents came to me and they said, hey, look, we really think now is the time to do this. And we'd really like you to take a look at it. So uh, that's why I decided to do it. What um, negative feedback have you received from people with this bill? So I've done probably about 15 interviews in the last, uh, you know, three days. And so it's been on, you know, kind of all over the media. And I've gotten exactly one email from one person that said, uh, you know, hey, I don't like, I don't like marijuana and it's not a good idea. So I've gotten probably a thousand Facebook messages and phone calls and text messages and everything else of people that are supportive of it. And, you know, it's countless emails of people that are supportive of it. So, um, and uh, that, that surprised me. I thought it would be a lot more, uh, you know, a lot more negative response or somewhat more negative response. I think the polling that came out last week, there was a, a big statewide poll that showed two thirds of, of the state actually supports legalization. So this is really a popular, uh, you know, despite maybe what we think about in politics and especially in Louisiana, uh, this is actually a very popular uh, position in the state in general, like two thirds of the people support it, Republicans, Democrats, everybody. So, um, and uh, you know, in my experience that I've seen in the last couple of days, you know, that's how it's been, uh, you know, I've had overwhelmingly positive uh, feedback. With this potential tax revenue, where do you feel the state most greatly needs to use this potential revenue towards? Yeah, so I have my, uh, the way that the, the taxing portion, so there's a separate bill that deals with the tax portion. Um, right now I have it set up so 50% goes to the locality, to local governments where the, uh, basically where the sale would be made. So wherever the dispensary or the growing operation be located, half of the money would go to that specific, um, that specific uh, parish or municipality. And then the half of it would go to the, to go to the state. Uh, of that half that goes to, to the local governments, I have um, dedicated 20% of that to law enforcement. And so the reason for that is that uh, I think that's a big hurdle that a lot of people have is they feel like if they, you know, legalize marijuana, it will kind of, it will decrease public safety. They're not going to, uh, you know, they're, they're not going to be safe in their homes and stuff like that. So I felt like putting that 20% toward law enforcement will kind of help, you know, assuage some of those fears. And uh, really what you're doing then is it makes this a, a very clear trade-off of your you know, you're taking that money from the black market, which is, you know, the dealers and the drug cartels, and you're putting it directly into, you know, your police and law enforcement to make, uh, to make better, uh, make your, make your community safer. But then you still have a large amount, right? So you have 30% uh, 
that's just going to be un, you know, undedicated that just goes straight to the local governments to you know fix roads or schools or do those projects that they really can't get the money for. Um, I think you know obviously the the roads and infrastructure is a huge problem we have now in Louisiana, and you're looking at about 200 million dollars a year. Um, that's the projection right now, anyway. About 200 million dollars a year in revenue from this, and so you know 200 million dollars will go a long way in you know fixing a lot of these problems. You know whether it's the roads, you know helping you know build new schools or renovate them, all those kind of things. Uh, and I think that it, you know especially for a, a poor state like Louisiana, like that's that's a lot of money to just leave on the table. Not to not to mention that really that you know uh, the marijuana is still there; it's uh, still widespread in the community. But like I said, all that money is going to you know drug dealers and drug cartels and stuff instead of going to fix our problems and uh, you know employ our citizens. And talked about that. Talked about that. What is the next step for the bill? Uh, so it's uh, it's scheduled. Uh, well, it's it's uh, been pre-filed already. So it will be uh, read in, I think, probably on the first day uh, of the session, which starts next Monday. And then it's going to be referred to the, uh, the Criminal Justice Committee, which I sit on. And so it'll be scheduled for hearing in the Criminal Justice Committee. And that'll probably be its first kind of official step. Uh, it's got to get out of the committee, which I, I think is a pretty good shot. I think it got a lot of bipartisan support. Um, it'll go to the floor of the House from there. Um, and I think, like I said, I, have a, a, I think I have a pretty good bipartisan support. I'm hoping to get it off the floor of the House. And from there, we'll go to the Senate. So um, after that, we'll, we'll see how it goes. The Senate's kind of a different animal, but I, you know, I'm hopeful that it will get passed. And uh, I think really, I think there's been, at least for me, there's been a huge outpouring of support. Um, I think you know, my colleagues in the House and even in the Senate are saying they're hearing a lot too from their constituents. So I think as long as people really um, you know, let the representatives know how much they care and their senators too, especially, let, their, let the representatives and senators know how much they care about this. I think it'll, it will go through this year. Are other city councils, such a larger city, such as New Orleans, um, Monroe, Shreveport, Baton Rouge, are they in line with this? Are they are they showing their support? Um, so I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that New Orleans, uh, New Orleans has you know has decriminalized uh, marijuana. Uh, I think Shreveport just recently did. Um, so I think that they're kind of in line. Those bigger cities are really in line with this. I think if you look at the polling, uh, the polling kind of uniformly across the state was was very positive. Um, so I think I haven't, you know, obviously I haven't asked them all, hey, look, what do you, you guys take an official position on this? Um, and the great thing about this is you don't really have to because the people will have their own voice, right? And um, that's across the country uh, where, where marijuana has been legalized. It's been really done by the, an initiative by the people. And we don't have that kind of referendum mechanism here in Louisiana. So really the legislature has to take the initiative to give people a voice. But uh, that's what we're doing now. So I think that uh, that's the, the right way to move forward and you know, I think it's going to be uh, popular across the state. And one thing about marijuana, it, it leads to a lot of arrest. Um, these arrests simply for just having it in your possession, possession of marijuana. Is there a limit once it's decrim if the bill goes through, once it's decriminalized, is there a limit to how much marijuana someone can carry on their person? Would they have to have a permit? Um, how, how will that work? Yeah, so you're not going to you're not going to need a permit uh, right now. How we have it written, there's not going to be a specific limit, but you're going to have you can only uh, there is a, going to be a limit on uh, the amount you can buy at any one time. So you're only going to be able to buy an ounce of, of, of marijuana at a time. So uh, or every day, sorry. So they can only sell you an ounce of marijuana a day. Um, and then the, there's also going to be a, an, an individual permit to grow it. And there's a limit on how many plants you can grow and how many, you know, even in your household you can grow. So there, there are some, some strict limits on what you can, you know, how much you can um, like grow or buy. But typically right now we don't have it written in the bill that there's a limit on how much you can possess in your person. And do you think also this also helps kind of end a cycle of marijuana arrests for, for people um, to feel a lot of people say, just for having marijuana, you shouldn't be arrested and, and yeah. in prison or in jail and then face possibly prison time for it. And it, it creates a cycle for many people, marijuana arrests. You think this will help in that cycle? Um, I do. I think that, you know, society, as you can tell from, you know, if two thirds of people support it. You can tell that society has kind of moved away from, you know, marijuana is a terrible substance and people who have it or sell it should go to jail. So I think when you have laws that, the, that society doesn't support, that's when you run into all these problems kind of with the justice system interacting with the community and uh, not being on the same on the same page. And so I think that, uh, you know, this legalization effort uh, will, you know, put the put the police back in the position of, you know, catching the bad guys. And so I think that they all want to be on that side, too. 
Uh, they want to be looking for the, you know, the the burglars and the robbers and all those guys, murderers, not, you know, not the guys who are, who are carrying some pot. So I think that this will really align those interests and, you know, it'll save us money just on the enforcement, you know, just on the enforcement um, the side of it. You know, we don't have the courts going to be bogged down with all these, you know, all these people going in there for simple possession of marijuana. And you're not going to have the police having to waste any resources doing it. So I, I really think it's going to be a win for everybody. And would you have to be a Louisiana resident? Could someone from Texas or the outlying states that surround us, could they come and purchase marijuana as well? Yeah, they can. Yeah, they can. So, I mean, I think there, there's no permit required. There's, you just have to have a, a, a you know, government issued ID. And so, I mean, that was a big consideration for me because we could have done a kind of medical program where, you know, you had to go to a doctor and you had to get, you know, a license or something like that. But that's a lot more complicated, especially like for the tourist industry and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we have a huge tourist industry here in Louisiana. So we really wanted to make something that, hey, if you came here for a, you know, if you're a tourist and you're here on vacation in New Orleans, wherever, um, then you could buy, then you could buy it legally and you can use it too. So I think that's going to be big because you have a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of out-of-state visitors that are probably going to want to come here, especially when our surrounding regions haven't really legalized it yet. So I think that'd be a, a boon for our economy and, you know, get a lot of, uh, you know, tax money paid for by people who aren't, you know, aren't here. So aren't from here. So it's a, you know, a win for everybody. And is there anything else you'd like to say, Representative? Um, yeah, it's kind of an interesting situation because, you know, like I said, I'm a conservative. I've never smoked marijuana. I've never even smoked a cigarette. Uh, but I think that this is really a position that is uh, consistent with those kind of conservative views, right? Um, like if you're, if you support, you know, individual liberty, free markets and uh, limited government, I feel like this is a, uh, you know, the right path to take. And I think it's really a bipartisan position that we can really solve some of the problems that we've run, we've had historically. And I think we can use that money to really, you know, help fix Louisiana. And you have to be 18, right? Or do you have to be 21? You're, you're going to have to be 21. 21. Yeah. Okay. 21. So similar to gambling. Um, yeah. It's like gambling or alcohol. It's just, it's a similar, similar deal. All right. Well, that's it. Thank you so much. That was excellent. Um, this yeah, will be no on problem. tonight at six and okay. 10 on KSLA okay. and everything. Right. So thank you so much all, for your time. All my friends in Shreveport. No worries. <laughs> well, good luck to you. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Right, Have a good one.